All right, welcome to the next episode of the GT6 restoration. Yeah, so you saw how in the last episode we, we rebuilt the fuel pump, we assembled the dis distributor, which I took apart earlier. We had a little bit of an issue with the distributor. I wanted to install electronic ignition in the distributor, but I couldn't because, because I have the electronic ignition for a different distributor. So anyways, we assembled it with points and um, pretty much on this side we are done, aren't we? We need to install the oil filter adapter, but for that I'd like to have the transmission installed so the rear end of the engine goes at the correct height and then I'm going to be able to clock the adapter here properly. We're going to do that later. For the front, we only need the water pump, which is there, painted, taken care of, so that's a quickie. But here on the other side, we don't have anything. So the intake and the exhaust manifolds with the carburetors. There's a petcock here. Oh, here it is. I thought I lost it. Okay, so this petcock we need to install. But let's focus on these first. <laughs> I know, right? Not a great view, but we're going to have to take care of everything. Of course, we want to take the carburetors apart, make sure that everything inside is moving because they've been sitting for 35 years, right? And um, check the diaphragms and everything. If we have to rebuild them, we might rebuild them, but I have the feeling that Keith already did that because I can see here these look like new seals on the throttle shafts so maybe maybe he's done that already so we'll see anyways they are 35 years old so <laughs> I don't know we're not gonna aim at rebuilding them initially unless we have no other choice initially I just want to clean them and make them look nice and make them operational and see how the car is going to run with them and then if we need to rebuild them we're going to rebuild them later but this is what drives me crazy all the linkage the hardware here everything you know i had recently a meltdown with my speedfire <laughs> because because the linkage and the hardware and everything is super rusted even though it was nice and shiny before so here what i think we're gonna do is we're not gonna leave it like that i'm gonna take my time I'm going to clean them and maybe zinc plate them. So as you know, Eastwood and uh, that other company, I forgot their name, I'm gonna put it here. Uh, they sell zinc plating kits and chrome plating and stuff like that. But they are expensive and uh, I don't think we need all that. My friend uh, Alan Vinegar, if you remember him, Mr. Carburetor, one of his businesses is rebuilding carburetors. And he actually has really good results of uh, zinc plating with stuff that he bought from Home Depot. So he gave me his PDF presentation and, with, and based on that presentation, we're gonna go ahead and use these components and some more that I still need to buy. And we're gonna zinc plate all that. First, of course, we have to take everything apart and clean it. And by the time everything is ready, which is tomorrow, I hope that we're gonna have all the components. So we have muriatic acid, we have white vinegar, we have uh, distilled water, we have acetone over there. <laughs> what else we need is sugar, apparently, and salt, washing soda, and most importantly, we need a zinc anode, which we are expecting to come tomorrow. And uh, yeah, in the meantime, let's take this apart and clean it. So here, before I take it apart, I actually, I want to take a video of how everything is assembled because you see, it's 
complicated linkage here. Never seen that. On the other GT6s that I worked on, they were different. The linkage was different. Uh, it looks like it is. Yeah. The air pump, actually, this is an air valve. I've been told this is not called air pump. I think it's called air valve. Anyways, um, here I'm struggling with one screw, which it should have been a bolt like this, but somehow they put a flathead screw there and now I have to figure out how to take it out. It just doesn't want to budge even with this big screwdriver. So I might need to take out the impact one. All right, so this set has been given to me by one of my followers, one of you guys. And now we're gonna use it for this stubborn screw. So we need to support it underneath. I don't wanna break the manifold, you know. Did it move? I think it moved. Oh yeah. That's what it needed. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's what it needed. You, buddy, are not going back in. Even though it looks like actually, well, looks like it's original because there's countersink here. Maybe if it is a hex bolt, it's gonna be in the way for the linkage. Yeah, so it's probably original. Okay, I'm sorry, kid. I have no idea what I'm talking about. And the fact that the carbs are barely hanging here means that they've been taken out. So I'm pretty sure Keith rebuilt them. He might have even told me something, but I don't remember. It's been a while. But you know what I'm noticing here? These carbs don't have adjustable jets underneath. I hope that the needle is adjustable. So here's to the manifold. We're gonna, we're gonna deal with it later. So I suggest that we take apart one carb at a time so we don't make a mess, right? Yeah, you see? Kit, do you recognize your handwriting? It says out and then there's an arrow pointing up. So let's take this one apart. Here we're gonna put all the parts but somewhere else I want to put all the parts that are going to be zinc plated. The nuts I'm not going to zinc plate because probably I'm going to replace them. I think I have new ones. Same with the lock washers, I have new ones, so I don't need to bother with them. I'm going to zinc plate only what's, what I can't replace. Uh-oh, no diaphragms. Perfect. So we're not starting it anytime soon. <laughs> yep, we need to buy rebuilding kits. All right. Well, I think the needles are adjustable, which is good because they have the notches here of the, on the air valve. Yeah, that's to lock this. And the needle is adjustable, so that's great. Okay, great. I'm gonna finish disassembling everything here and I'll bring you back. All right, it's, it's almost apart, but I wanted to show you here some discoveries that I made. <laughs> so there's absolutely no needle here. I don't know where it is. It's been taken out. So the float. So the needle is missing. There's absolutely no gaskets anywhere. The gasket from here is missing. So I guess uh, Keith took them apart, cleaned them, and eventually maybe 
he was going to order, or maybe he even ordered and he has it in the parts or a building kit. So what I have to do now is I have to go and check my old video and see what parts I have because I'm not going to go through the bins. Or actually I have somewhere, I have a list that I made of all the parts, but we will see. Also here I can see that this, uh, this seal has been taken out. On this side we still have the seal inside, but on this side the seal is missing. So we have to order a whole rebuilding kit and in the meantime we're going to clean everything and zinc plate whatever we need to zinc plate. Also there must be a valve here that is missing. Wow! And I don't think it's coming with the kit. There must be a like a diaphragm here that's getting pushed by this spring and this is surprisingly not adjustable. The early ones have a slot here and you can adjust this valve. This is not adjustable so I don't like this valve anyways, I don't like what it does. It is actually a throttle bypass and sometimes this valve gets stuck open and then you have problems with uh, high idle. Okay, and this I'm gonna take apart and uh, I'll be back. All right, so this is what we're down to. I stripped the carburetor, the body, as much as I could. There's nothing else that I can take out, I guess. So this, we're gonna see how we're gonna clean up and polish. I might ask uh, David, Chef Tash, if I can borrow my, uh, <laughs> my ultrasonic cleaner and see if I can clean the body and the rest of the parts here, some of them in the ultrasonic cleaner and these are all the parts that we're gonna need to plate I guess. These I had to drill because they were riveted too here so I drilled them but later when the time comes we're gonna install them back with rivets like this. That's how they were so it's gonna work. So now I'm gonna go on the wire wheel I'm gonna wire wheel everything as much as I can. If there's something else that we can do to clean them better, we're gonna do, but for now, I'm, I'm gonna go do the rough cleaning on the wire wheel. All right, so I started cleaning here on the wire wheel. The big parts are mostly cleaned as far as I can on the wire wheel. The rest is gonna have to be taken care of uh, by the muriatic acid, I guess. Um, like, we will see what's going to happen with here inside, for example, there's rust that I don't want to go that deep. So we will see if the muriatic acid is going to take care of that or not. Um, this is a huge part that I don't know if it is going to work. I'm going to try with that later. I'm going to start by doing a smaller part, maybe something like this, just to test the things and then we're going to go from there. Uh, hardware I still need to clean so but anyways I want to start the process like I said let's take this part for example maybe we should start with just one and I'm gonna prepare the bats so here I have all the ingredients now that we need so my zinc plates came so this is apparently 99.8% pure zinc I have 10 of these sheets I have few containers. I have this one, which I'm gonna use for my acid, for my muriatic acid, which is still there. And once this container is open, I'm gonna put it here, and this is not coming inside. I'm gonna close this, I'm gonna put it in the pool house, where I have actually, I found that I have two of these bottles. 
so <laughs> i shouldn't have bought any but that's fine i'm gonna use it so again this was the main reason why i didn't want to do plating because of this muriatic acid because once this container is open everything around it starts rusting so i'm gonna do that outdoor and i'm gonna keep it in this container once i'm done i'm gonna close it and again it's gonna stay outside it's not coming inside the garage so we have uh, white vinegar which is i believe what is it seven percent so we have to dilute it to five percent i think with distilled water and we have ph plus so i couldn't find washing soda which is weird because many stores say that they have them and when i go to the actual store they can't find it they keep offering me baking soda which is different baking soda is uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate and the washing soda is sodium carbonate no hydrogen in it so this apparently is the same thing contains sodium carbonate so that's what we're gonna use to for our alkaline bath and uh, acetone to degrease the parts before we even start the process i also have a copper tube that i'm gonna use over my container where i'm gonna hang parts and i have copper wire that i'm gonna hang parts with and that's it so oh and i also have my power supply here which we're gonna have to set to six volts and we're gonna have to limit the amperage to 0 0.2 amps per square inch so we have to calculate the surface area of this part in square inches and then multiply the square inches by 0 0.2 and we will see how many amps we need to limit our power supply to so Alan Vinegar sent me his instructions here on how he does it and I don't know if I have permission to show the whole presentation to you so I'm just gonna explain what I'm doing uh, so we need four different containers one is the alkaline bath alkaline how do you pronounce that I don't know I pronounce that alkaline where we're gonna wash our parts it needs to be heated so it's gonna be hot water so this we're not gonna prepare yet the other one is just a rinse bath with distilled water the third one is the acid which again we're not gonna prepare yet and the fourth one the last one is the the electrolyte so for let's make the electrolyte so that's where we're gonna do everything i guess yeah that's gonna work well i'm gonna bend these down so it doesn't turn left and right once we put it there yeah something like that um so here we have something that i didn't show you we have quarter cup of salt and quarter cup of sugar why don't ask me like I'm not gonna go into the chemical formulas and stuff I'm just gonna follow the instructions uh, and then we need one liter of 5% white vinegar this one is 7% so we're gonna dilute it a little bit so maybe we're gonna do three quarters of a liter vinegar and quarter of a liter water so that's half a liter here okay we're gonna close it for now and later we will see if the sugar and the salt is dissolved or not so that's clear here that's our electrolyte maybe we should mark it electrolyte let's prepare our rinse bath rinse all right i had to go pick up a kid from school so i'm back now and this still hasn't dissolved perfectly so i guess we have a saturated solution 
and it can't dissolve anymore, but that's fine. All right, so now I can go outside and do the muriatic acid, but before we do that, actually, I'm gonna start um, the process here because this electrolyte needs to be charged with zinc ions for 30 minutes before we can dip something in it. So we're gonna start the process and during those 30 minutes, we're gonna do the other two processes. So to charge this, we need two of these plates. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do both the positive and the negative are both going to zinc plates. Later, we're gonna remove the negative from the zinc plate and we're gonna attach it to our part. So I can even put the cover now, I guess. And let's turn it on. We need six volts. And it automatically went to two amps. So you see now how it starts circulating. Wow, that's interesting. You can literally see what's happening here. Anyways, we're gonna leave that alone for now. 30 minutes. And let's go prepare the acid bath. We're gonna wear gloves. First, we're gonna do water because we're gonna have to dilute it 50-50. So I'm gonna do half a liter of water. Try not to breathe this. And always add the acid to the water, not the other way around. So let's close this now. It's becoming hot right away. Now oh, that's gonna explode. So I'm gonna leave it a little bit open so it doesn't go boof on me. Okay, so now that our acid is ready, we can go back inside. We're gonna come back to it whenever we need it. The water for our alkaline bath alkaline. needs to be between 150 and 180 degrees. So I'm gonna warm up the water to almost boiling temperature and then in, uh, for 15 minutes it's gonna cool down a little bit. And then for the next bath we can just go and warm it up in the microwave, I guess. So the instructions don't say how much washing soda we need, so I'm just gonna put this much or maybe a little bit more. Anyways, it's for cleaning, so if it's more, it's not gonna hurt, right? In the meantime now, let's calculate the surface of this thing. Okay, I can't find my good caliper, so I'm gonna do it with this one, which doesn't have battery, but I can check here. So that's about 600, uh, 600 tau by 900 and another 900 and and 1200 so that's three inches by 600 is just the straight part three inches times 0.6 is uh, 1.8 and then we have 0.7 by 0.4 seven times four that's 0.28 and let's say with this 0.30 so 0.30 plus uh, 1.8 so that's about two square inches per side and the other side is two square inches, so it's four square inches, more or less. Okay, so four square inches times 0 0.2 amps is 0 0.8 amps. So we need to dip this into the electrolyte for 40 minutes, flipping around the parts at 20 minutes uh, at uh, 0.8 amps, right? So let's see if the water boiled. All right, so I, <laughs> I brought the hot water but I didn't press the recording button as usual. So I brought the hot water and poured it into the container. Before I dipped the part, I cleaned it with acetone. So we're gonna leave it here for 15 minutes. Hopefully it's not gonna cool down too much, the water for these 15 minutes. All right, so it's been 15 minutes and this is relatively warm still. So I think we're good. Now let's take it outside to the muriatic acid. go so it starts bubbling right away so now the instructions say to keep it in the acid for 15 minutes or until the bubbling stops 
All right, it's been 10 minutes and looks like the there's barely any bubbles. Well, it's still bubbling a little bit. But I think we're gonna leave it here. I think that's where we're gonna stop. So now let's take it inside and rinse it. Okay, I'm gonna come back and clean and close the container and put it away properly because I don't want the dog to come and get hurt later. Okay, so now we can rinse it in the distilled water. Actually, we're gonna leave it here for a second so we can prepare our electrolyte now. Now we can disconnect the negative because that's our cathode. So we have the anode here and we can connect our negative to that. And now we can hang our part here like we said, for 40 minutes. It starts bubbling right away. So now we have to limit our current to, we said, 0 0.8, right? Because we have four square inches. So when we limit our current, the voltage is gonna drop. But I guess that's fine. Okay, 0 0.9, that's fine. So it went down to two volts. Let's see if it is going to change after. Anyways, we're going to leave it for 20 minutes and then we're going to come and flip it. It says to flip it. So we're going to come and flip it in 20 minutes. Okay, it's been 20 minutes, so let's see. Now we have to flip the part, right? I don't know what's happening, but the copper wire is black. Something is happening, but we will see. <laughs> okay. Bubbles continue. Now the voltage increased a little bit. But it's still 2 volts, so... Anyway. Okay, it's been another 20 minutes, so we should be done. Okay, that's it. I think we should rinse it now. Not, I don't remember. And I know it looks dark, but it needs to be polished now with steel wool. So we're gonna let it dry. I'm actually having dinner now, so <laughs> I'm gonna come back to it in 20, 10, 15 minutes and we're gonna see. All right, so this is what it looks like. It's still not dry. It's been like half an hour, but it's cold in the garage, so it hasn't dried. So I brought a, oopsie. I brought a heat gun and I'm gonna dry it. So now let's grab some steel wool and polish it and see if we've done something. Wow, actually, it's nice and shiny. The thing is, it wasn't too bad before, so I don't know how good our result is. I mean, is it shiny bare metal or it's shiny chrome plated metal not chrome zinc plated metal i don't know but i guess we will find out okay so that's what it looks like again i'm not really sure if that's if it has any coating or it's just shiny metal but you know what we can compare it with the other one Okay, so this is metal that is just wire brushed. I guess we should chrome plate this tomorrow and then compare them again and see if they look alike. But it feels smoother. Anyways, that's our first part. Tomorrow we're going to try with a bigger batch, of course, because if we take forever for one part like that, we're going to take 
I don't know. I'm going to be retired by the time I'm done with these carbs. All right, so this is the ne next badge that I want to do together. And I just spent probably 15 minutes calculating the surface of this. <laughs> so it's so complicated. How do you calculate the surface of this? But anyways, I was able to draw this part here and then um, I drew a square or a rectangle here and then I took all the parts that are not included in the rectangle, for example this part here that is out of it, I decided that it is pretty much the same surface as this gap here, so this comes here, this part that is out of the rectangle is pretty much the same surface as this part here, so I managed to put everything in a rectangle and that's 2.16 square inches and we have two sides so that's times two we have uh, 4.3 let's say square inches so that's coming here I calculated that the spring has about two inches of circumference here not surface circumference so it has four turns so I calculated that more or less the spring has 10 inches of length, then based on the diameter, we calculated the surface. All that adds up to 12.3 square inches of surface times 0 0.02 amps, 2.5 amps more or less for all these parts. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this batch now. <laughs> That's crazy, isn't it? So I brought this old microwave that <laughs> is going to be perfect for that, so it's going to warm up. We are also charging this because it's the next day, I don't know if I mentioned, but it's the next day, so we're charging the electrolyte again. It's going to take 30 minutes. In these 30 minutes, we're going to have to clean these parts and then uh, acid bath, rinse them, and when we're ready, we're going to dip them here. We're kind of getting into the momentum here, right? <laughs> And while this is happening, we're gonna go and clean some more parts here and get them ready for the next baths. All right, the bath is gone already through the alkaline bath. Alkaline. And it is in the acid now. Nice weather finally today. It's not hot, but it is like sunny at least. Anyways, this is what's happening here now. I'm curious to see if the spring inside is gonna get cleaned from the acid because there was uh, rust inside the coil that I couldn't clean. So I'm curious to see if that's gonna get cleaned. All right, so the acid bath is done. So the parts are rinsing. And to be honest, I'm really happy with the spring. Let me see if I can focus on it now. Come on, focus. Yeah, inside the spring there was rust and now there isn't anymore. So, what did we say? 2.2? I forgot, 2.4. Just want to make sure that they're all bubbling, which means they're making good contact because they're not hanging. So, I might need to change this container to something that is deep you know so they can literally hang because this is not deep enough okay i just flipped this around and i figured that this is how i can control it because i'm worried that they are not hanging and they might not make contact but as soon as they lose contact look what's happening with the amperage it drops down so as long as we are close to where we started this means that they are making contact right and also, as soon as we reduce the amount of metal that is in there or the amount of surface, the amperage drops. So now I think I'm not even going to calculate the surface anymore. Because if we unleash here the power, the amount of amps that we want to go to, it is still there. It is 2.47, so I think it automatically goes there to the amperage. So I'm not even going to calculate the surface anymore. Anyway, so here, that's the hardest part I mean with the smallest part we have to figure out how to hang them in there we don't want to hang each and every one individually right? that's gonna be a disaster but I don't know if if they touch each other I don't know if they're gonna be plated properly so 
Anyways, we're gonna have to do the trials and errors. Oh, finally. Oh, wow, I just realized what happened to the plate. <laughs> it's getting eaten. Wow, it literally disintegrates and moves there. <laughs> That's interesting. All right, so uh, I don't know if you can see very well here. Let me put it. Uh, let's go inside. Okay, you see those deposits? I don't know what these are, but they are all over the place. So let's clean them and see what the parts look like underneath. All right, so these are the parts that we started this morning and they're not too bad. <laughs> I don't know. I think these are decent results. I don't know what light, like this light is so weird here. But anyways, I don't think they look too bad. The problem is they take forever to polish after. And the spring, surprisingly, became really nice inside. Even though there was rust that I couldn't clean inside, now it cleaned itself and I was able to polish it. So anyways, takes like an hour for these four parts to go through the whole process but anyways if uh, you do this in the background while you're working on something else it's worth the all right i think i'm learning more and more here i think i overdid it the first two times because um the parts were really dark after the bath and now they are not so dark so you see what they look like and I was like, wow, maybe I didn't do it for enough time or I put too many parts at the time. But I went and I polished one of them with uh, steel wool and it actually looks not great, but I mean, it looks as the other parts that were overdone a little bit. So I think I went too far. I mean, uh, I kept them for too long. So what I can do for a future, I guess, I can take them every once in a while out of the bath and see if they are this dark, then they are ready. I don't need to hold them longer. So I'm curious actually now to see what the nuts and the washers look like. I want to polish those and see, and the screws. I want to see how hard it is going to be to polish them. So I need to dry them out now. All right, actually, the hardware doesn't look too bad. I mean... I mean, it's good. The thing is though, to clean it, it's the... With the steel wool, it's disaster. You can't just clean it with the... And polish it with the steel wool. So, I'm using... Uh, so, I'm using this uh, brush. I hope that I'm not uh, damaging, like I'm not removing the coating, but it is what it is. With the steel wool, it takes forever and it doesn't work very well. Even the nuts look good, this little spring there, so yeah, it's coming together. And guess what I have inside my lemonade stand? <laughs> it's like the huge part so i want to see what's going to happen with the with the big plate whether it's going to work well or not so she's bubbling inside here we're going to let her sit i guess it's going to take longer time i don't know we'll see hmm, it actually cleans pretty well this part so let's see what it's going to require to get plated though All right, she's in. Let's see what it's gonna look like when it's ready. It surprisingly draws only three and a half amps, even though my I'm not limiting the amps anymore. So this thing can produce up to 13 amps, but that's what the part requires. I mean, that's how much she wants. 
so that's how much she gets. I guess I, if I increase the voltage, what's gonna happen? Yeah, then we can draw more amps, but I'm keeping it at six volts. Let's leave it for a while. That's what's left from my first plate. So after three butts, that's how much was left from my first zinc plate. So my second one is inside. Wow. <laughs> All right, these are the last parts hanging in there. I think they're gonna go all in one batch. We'll see how it's gonna work though. Because my container is small. Maybe in two batches, I don't know. We'll see, but there is nothing more on my plate here, on my magnetic plate here. So this is still bubbling up. We're gonna leave it for a little bit longer. Meanwhile, we're warming up our ultrasonic cleaner that we borrowed from Chef Tash. <laughs> it is mine. He borrowed it from me. <laughs> Everybody says, why don't you borrow Chef Tash's ultrasonic cleaner? Yes, I just borrowed my own ultrasonic cleaner from Chef Tash. <laughs> so we're warming up right now the solution to 50 degrees Celsius. Currently it's 19. And uh, we have the rest of the parts of the carbs here. So I started cleaning this one and you see where I was able to reach with the wire brush. I cleaned it, but here I just gave up. So I want to see what's going to happen. I'm just going to compare now this part with this part after it goes through the bath. And we will see if there's points of cleaning with wire wheel with wire brush before or there's no point so anyways once it warms up once it, once it warms up we're gonna dip these parts too so now we can take out our plate from there okay so this is what it looks like and i wonder what the difference is between this blue grayish part and this part here. Is this the part that got plated and this is not plated yet? I have no idea. But we'll see. I guess we're gonna find out. Well, it actually looks pretty good, to be honest. I'm surprised. So, anyways, we have the next budge inside of part and we still have I left this for one more. Okay, so here it is. I think it worked pretty well even without scrubbing it with the brush. I don't know. I don't even remember where I cleaned actually. But anyways, I'm not going, I'm not going to polish it and all that stuff, but at least it's nice and clean now. Oops, there's a little difference, right? Let's see this. There's a little difference. They look the same before. This screw, yeah, little difference. So hopefully that's how they're gonna stay. Anyway, I had to brush this a little bit otherwise it wasn't perfectly clean but with this brush i was able to brush it a little bit and it came out pretty clean it wasn't dirty to begin with it wasn't dirty it was just oxidized you know because obviously kit cleaned them took them apart to rebuild them maybe even he has the kit somewhere the rebuild kit but anyways we ordered a new one all the hardware looks great now. The question is, is it gonna stay like this? Anyway, once the kits arrive, we're gonna assemble this one 
and only then we're gonna take this one apart. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyways, I think I'm not gonna hold you here anymore. I think we have more than enough for one video, so we're gonna cut it off here. I'm gonna do the same with the other carb, I'm gonna clean it up, and then maybe in the next video we're gonna assemble them. I'm hoping that I'm gonna have the rebuild kits uh, arrive by, down, by that time, so we can uh, assemble it and, and put everything on the engine. We also have the manifolds here that we need to deal with, so I'm gonna do that in the meantime. I'm just gonna clean them and uh, we're gonna paint this one. Anyways, that's a point of another video. So once again, guys, thanks for watching, for commenting, subscribing, sharing, and supporting me on Patreon or by PayPal transfers or sending me parts or tools or everything that you do for me, guys. It's really appreciated. Thank you so much. So thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.